Spider-Man 2 is set up to have three DLCs, and we're going to go over the details that we know so far, which is actually more than you'd think thanks to a hack and a leak on the studio. And I'll explain how this links in with what we've seen so far in the games, as a lot of the DLC actually links up to the little side missions in the game. Although the first DLC actually seems to have very little set up in the second game, and is called Beatlemania, which will of course be about the Beatle villain. For those who aren't very familiar with him, he's a villain who fights in a high-powered suit, kind of like an Iron Man suit, but the guy's obviously a villain. Now, as I say, there doesn't seem to be much setup for this, unless it's going to tie in with Craven's children, or rather just child, as the missions that you go through actually reveal that they have all killed each other, and seemingly only one remains. Although we're not entirely sure if that's true, we only have one person's word to go on in the game. You seek a challenge to fill the rush of fear again. I will give you something to fear, father. <laughs> uh, your brother made such promises too. Go on then. Terrify me. Anyone who gets in my way will suffer the same fate as Nedorochi. Is that so? And your mother? She was in the way. I assume Vladimir was no problem for you either. I live for the hunt. If you really are the one, let us see if you can leave Volgograd unscathed. Now this one was planning to come to New York to kill his father so that he can take over the Empire. Now it's possible he has the Beetle armor or is in league with him. And there is also the Chameleon to mention, whom it's actually revealed to be Craven's brother. And it turns out that Craven was hunting him in the game, presumably to fight him to the death. Now, if you destroy all of the hunter drones, then the data on their target reveals that most of them, if not all of them, are dead. And when Spider-Man traces it to an apartment, he finds a lot of different masks and weapons, and he realizes that this is the Chameleon's apartment, who Spider-Man actually thought was still in prison. Though for some reason he doesn't bother to check up on this and see whether or not he's escaped or if there's an imposter in his cell. But anyway, there are a series of automated messages rigged to sensors that play as you walk around the apartment. And they reveal that Chameleon is Craven's brother and that he loved him but Craven supposedly hated him. And he knew that he would be looking for him so he has left and rigged the apartment with poisonous gas. But as Spider-Man swings away, Chameleon is actually watching from a nearby building which clearly alludes to him coming into the game in the future, possibly to get revenge on his brother's killer, Harry Osborn, or he may want to just take out Spider-Man as he blames him instead, or he might blame both of them, or he might just want to attack Spider-Man, is the chameleon after all. So the chameleon could be the beetle, or he could be masquerading as the beetle, or it could be that he's just a completely separate mission from the events of the game, and that the children don't actually interlink. But personally I would prefer it if they linked it in with the Craven family, as there was so much build up in all the recorded messages and the hunter drone missions to collect and they all spoke about his family. So not seeing some sort of dramatic and violent conclusion to this would be a real letdown and very anticlimactic. So I think it is quite likely that this will tie in with the beta one. Now this DLC is set to be released in the first three months of 2024 so we should know soon. And of course, they have promised a New Game Plus update in the early months of the year, so they may end up being released together. Although, to be fair, I still can't believe they didn't have a New Game Plus version in the actual game already. Once I completed it, I went to click on this and found out they don't, which is absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe it wasn't included in the launch. So hopefully that will come out sooner, but it might just be at the same time as this one. Extreme Carnage Now, if you complete all of the Flame missions with Wraith, and take down the cult leader, you eventually get to the finale where you find out that the cult is planning on detonating several bombs. Now obviously you stop them, but you then have to stop a runaway train from crashing, which Semi lands on top of Spider-Man, trapping him. The cult leader then pours gasoline on him as he monologues about his future plans. Apparently Norman Osborn placed a piece of the symbiote away for safekeeping. And it was of course on the train, and the cult leader's plan was to stop the train and steal it. His way was much more violent, and a lot more people have died in the process, so Spider-Man did make the right choice in stopping it. But still, the cult leader achieved his goals, and he then takes the symbiote and leaves, promising to use it to bring carnage to the world. When the crimson hour rolls over this earth, it shall bring true. 
Hmm? Judgment. And carnage. Now, that's not exactly a subtle reference, though let's be honest, we all knew the Carnage symbiote would be introduced in the game sooner or later. He is a fan favourite after all. Now, since this guy is clearly nuts and has a cult following, he'll come with his own army. Though whether he gives them symbiote powers or not, we don't know. They might just stick to guns and flamethrowers, but it does seem quite likely he would want to spread it. Although I could see a cult leader being very selfish with the power. I mean, it's kind of their MO after all. But personally, I would be quite disappointed if he didn't share this with the following. The symbiotes are hard to take down in a fight, sure, but it really wouldn't be the same if there weren't an army of them. And at the very least, some trusted lieutenant should at least get some powers. And of course, it would make the anti-venom suit quite useful, and it possibly could lead to him losing the anti-venom suit. I know a lot of people have been annoyed about that. Now, the cult's mission is to burn down the whole of New York, and then presumably the world. So, it's pretty clear what Spider-Man will be stopping them from doing. Now, since symbiotes are supposed to be vulnerable to fire, he may not have any fire powers to speak of. But this hasn't actually been set up in the game's universe as a major weakness. It is set up in the comics, but in this game, it's only been Sonic Blasts that make them weak. So they may give him some sort of fire abilities and just scrap the whole symbiotes being vulnerable to fire, which personally I would love to see. I mean, that could be quite interesting. And this is set up to be the second DLC. It's currently slated for release in spring of 2024. Spider-Verse. Now, as most of us know, the Spider-Verse film included nearly every rendition and reimagining of Spider-Man ever made, including video games. And our Spider-Man had a brief cameo in the second film. Video game guy. I love video games. Another video game guy. You, are you talking to me? So naturally, the game makers would want to set this up as canon in the game. And if you collect all of the Spider-Bots, you get this cutscene. Bro, what the hell is happening? <laughs> Look at this, a spider hero. We were all saved. Um, hi. Who are you? Me? I'm just a bartender who does favors for people every now and then. And I've learned that rogue spider bots are dangerous and bad for business. Let me take those off your hands. Whoa. Thank you, Spider-Man. We can always count on you to do the right thing. You're welcome. And if Miguel comes looking for these, tell him finders keepers. Wait, who's Miguel? <laughs> now, collecting the spider bots is time consuming. I especially had trouble with the very last one and flew around the last grid looking for them for what felt like hours. Now, you can probably cheat and find a map online if you do want to collect them, but if you want to do it the fun way, then there are two tricks to finding them. The first is that on the main map, if you go over the sections of the city, it'll tell you how many spider bots you've collected and how many are left in that section, which helps you not to cover the same ground twice looking for them. And the second trick is extremely useful. If you upgrade your traversal skills, there is a section with two upgrades, but you can only select to use one at a time. Now, if you select the one that shows crates on the minimap, then it will also show spider bots on the minimap. And this makes it so much easier to find them. But this scene does officially make the Spider-Verse canon for this game. After all, the bit in the film could have just been a little Easter egg. Now, this DLC is set to be the third and final one for the game, and it's called Spider-Verse Anomaly. And that does make sense. After all, it is the whole point of the Spider Society to get rid of anomalies. And since Miguel is set up in the clip in the game, it's likely he'll at least feature in the mission. I mean, I'd be very surprised if Spider-Gwen doesn't make an appearance as well. Although they may have Spider-Gwen there and then cut out Miguel since we have a Miles Morales, and we all know he doesn't like those. Now, sadly, the Miles Morales from the films won't be in the game, since this is clearly set before the events of the second film, which means Miles doesn't know about the Spider Society or that they can hop into different realities. And we know it's set before because our Spider-Man in the game doesn't know anything about this either. And he, of course, did feature in the film, so he must know at least a little about it. I would imagine that the mission in the game will feature him going to the Spider's base and filling in the rest of the scene from the film, as we don't know any details about why he was there. It is just a one-line cameo, after all. 
And if Miguel is in this DLC, it will be really interesting to see how he reacts to another Miles Morales Spider-Man, since he thinks he is an anomaly in the films. So maybe he'll try to take this Morales out, as he thinks he is another anomaly and threat to the universe. It'll be interesting to see, assuming Miguel shows up of course. Spider-Gwen or others may try to keep him away from it because of the Morales incident, though it is called the Spider-Verse Anomaly, so that could be a little prelude to them trying to take Morales out. And the most exciting thing about this is that they're going to release a special filter with this DLC that will make the game look more like the Spider-Verse films. And I'm really looking forward to playing this because I obviously love the animation styles, like most of us, that they use in the films, and I'm really curious to see what it looks like to play the game with Spider-Verse goggles on. And it's set to be released in the holiday season of 2024. And after this one, Insomniac is also going to release the Game of the Year edition of Spider-Man 2 that will include all of this DLC. And since the PC release is set to be around this time, it would make sense for them to combine the two, though no official announcements have been made about this. So it'll most likely just depend on when they finish the games in time. Most of the time it does just come to whether they can get the programming done in time after all. So we've got a lot of Spider-Man updates to look forward to and new content to keep us busy. Though I don't actually own a PS5 at the moment, I've been using my girlfriend's brothers so far. So it looks like I'll be seeing a lot of him this year. But let us know which one of these DLCs you're most excited for and any theories you have on what type of story they will feature. And I'd just like to quickly remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store and to say thanks to all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.